the envelope again and again and again and again. We're going to find out what the hell we're going to talk about today. Why do uh, electrostatic headphones require a special amplifier? Yeah. So this is another one of those High things. High voltage. <laughs> In the industry, ACDC. If you've yeah. been in the if you've been in the headphone industry a while, it seems so obvious. Everybody knows, right? And so people don't really talk about it. And so oddly enough, to newcomers, things like this, they're totally unaware. They have no idea that that's like a thing that you can't just oh, I just plug this headphone in. Yeah, can you imagine right? buying a Stax and then yeah. go to the plug it in and go? Well, yeah, the how connector is this would, would yeah, be a telltale phone or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 It, it probably happens. Probably. Yeah, it probably happens more than you would think. Not too commonly, Especially but the lower probably end happens. Yeah. yeah. And so why? What's required? Why do you need a special connector, a special amplifier design for an electrostatic headphones? What's the difference between that and conventional? And there's really a few things. First so, of all, that we should say they're not compatible with each other. You can't plug any other headphone into an electrostat headphone. That's Only an electrostat. Only electrostat. Yeah. So you can't, right. they're not interchangeable. Very at all. different designs. There's no adapters no. <laughs> that go between the two. No. You know, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> So, yeah. Of course, the goal is to make the final product of enjoyable music, sound, actual air motion. But the way an electrostatic goes about it compared to other driver technologies, it's very different. And so the electrical input that you're plugging your headphone in to get, totally different. Electrostatic headphones, they work on, surprisingly enough, static effectively, right? An electrostatic force. A mm -hmm. charge. Yes. They charge two plates. Well, two grids with a diaphragm, a conductive diaphragm between. So the grids need high voltage to, mm -hmm. to, to create sound. Yeah. I forget what the voltage is on those things, but it's hundreds. It, it's it's a few hundred volts. Yeah. It depends on the amp. Yeah. yeah, sure. It's a lot of Some volts. Some go over a thousand. Yeah. 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 You don't want to take a shower with one of these. Well, well any headphone, <laughs> really, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you definitely no water allowed, though. Yeah. You know, not, not around these things. So normally on something like your phone, your smartphone, the little plug on that where you plug your headphones in, your earbuds, they may be driven with half a volt, a volt, maybe two volts. Whereas electrostatic headphones, you could be 500,000 volts in that range. Yeah. So it's a huge difference in actual drive voltage. And that's why there's such a difference in the amplifier requirements. That's why they have a special connector, yeah, different the, cable the cable's and stuff different. like that. Yeah, yeah. there's more than, more than two or three conductors in it. It's got to right. carry high voltage in audio. And yeah, probably ground too. <laughs> well, so th I guess you don't see many people DIYing electrostatic cables either. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's know? true. Yeah, just keep with the stock. Yeah, cable. the aftermarket doesn't yeah. really. The cable needs to handle a thousand volts. Right. Yeah. So yeah. a little different class. That's some heavy insulation. Yeah. 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 That's you got to use the right stuff. Yeah. Yeah. At least if you wanted to conform to UL yes. ratings. <laughs> well, you probably do. It's for a thing you're putting on your head. Yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. Any, anyone ever get zapped by one of those? I have never heard about that. I have no idea. It's we, pretty uncommon. Yeah, yeah. It. Yeah. It's, it's pretty uncommon. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they have enough distance between you and it, and there's probably layers of insulation and distance. Yeah. That we should note that doesn't mean they're, they're very safe. Yeah, yeah. no, Typically, right. Typically, I, I very, very safe. I just I never heard of it, but I was just curious if you guys ever saw that. I don't think so. So, so it's, it's possible. You I mean, can get shot. a lot of volts there. Yeah. You but know? it really depends on the amplifier design. With a proper design, it's not an issue at all. Very, very unlikely, incredibly unlikely. Yeah. But in some situations, it has happened. Yeah. Um, now, typically, it's current limited to the point where it's just like a tingle or a little sudden shock. Right. It's not going to yeah. kill you. Yeah. But. Yeah, the current is very low. So very, in terms of. Yeah, it's not like a, a death wish or anything. Right, it's like a bad static shock, but, uh, maybe. You know, you're going to feel that. I mean, if it gets to you, you're going to feel it, I'm sure. I guess it depends on the scenario. But um, anyway, yeah, I, I haven't heard anyone doing it. But if I think it'd have to be more of a, some sort of equipment failure. Yeah. If something would have to go wrong somewhere. Unlikely. It's possible. Sure. Yeah. You know, whereas a, a conventional headphone, that's you're not going to feel. No. You could put your hand fingers yeah, right, right on the terminals. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're not going to feel right, that at all. Six volts. Maybe yeah. your tongue, maybe if you yeah. put it on across some terminals, but that's a, that's a nine volt battery effect. You know, yeah. you ever yeah. test a nine volt battery with your tongue? It yes. kind of hurts when they're good, Sometimes. and when they're not, they're like it doesn't do much of anything. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and for comparison. A high-end desktop class headphone amplifier made to drive higher power loads. Um, usually you'll get 50, 60, 80 volts out of it at most. Mm -hmm. So maybe two volts with a portable gear, uh, maybe 50 volts with desktop for conventional drivers, and six, seven, eight hundred volts for electrostatics. 
So totally different design. That's why they have a special amplifier, different cable connector and stuff like that. Uh, they work on very different principles as well. Um, it <laughs> basically, you're moving a sheet with static force. You're, a you're, very thin light sheet. Yeah, you're pushing yeah. and pulling it around to get it to do what you want. Whereas typically with a driver, uh, that a conventional driver, a planar magnetic driver, uh, there's usually only one coil. Um, you don't have two things pushing and pulling. It's, it's a very different approach, very different design. It requires, of course, different amplification. And it runs on very different voltages and currents. Yeah. And the electrostatic force that moves the diaphragm is quite weak, which is why they have to make the, uh, the diaphragm so paper, so thin. Yeah. I mean, it's just probably the thinnest material around. I think they use mylar in a lot of them, and it's a very thin. And it's and it because the electric set, it's not like a dynamic or a planar headphone where you can throw a couple watts into it or even well, you, you got know. big powerful magnets. Yeah, right. That yeah. too. Yeah. Right, which which create a motor structure yeah. while while that a, a quick dynamic motion, which you, you, that's why you tend to see also um, electrostats uh, are kind of limited in the base region. It's you know, in, in terms of what they can accomplish because it requires some force to produce 20 hertz and some motion. You know, you really got to move a diaphragm a bit, and I guess that's a, that's another issue with electrostats. They're limited in how much travel they can have because at some point the diaphragm will touch one of those high-voltage stators, and it's well, not, it it's does, just doesn't like anything. work. There's a trade-off uh, because with a planar magnetic design and typically a conventional design as well, you're moving the actual thing, the element that moves the air, the driver, you're moving that with magnetic force, magnetic field. And so with an electric magnetic field that you're generating from your FM amplifier, there's really no limit to how much of a force you could get. You can make the coil bigger, you can make more surface area, you can make a yeah, higher force or whatever. Up to the point where you fry something. Well, like yeah. 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 But you can make an incredible force compared sure. to static, whereas you're much more limited. It's much more challenging to get uh, very very strong drive force out of that yeah comparatively speaking and because they are two different amplifiers yeah where one's working on more of a high voltage electrostat principle the other one's raw the typical headphone amp is raw power it could deliver a lot of power into a into right. a load or a dynamic headphone so when the music calls upon it to hit bass hard right the bigger the amplifier the better it controls and does that right. where the electrostat it's it's basically it's it's always charged it's always got high voltage and it'll 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 try to move and it is quick because it's so light but it can't really push much air because it is so light it doesn't have the mass or the force available to do it so they tend to be again you know it's they're they're two different technologies you know, very radically different yeah two yeah. different technologies and a lot of people like the uh grew up with electrostats and they like it a lot because it does do certain things well because it is such a light diaphragm yeah. but the planers i think are pretty much for the most part turned in nowadays they're they're so good at full range uh you know that some people own both it just depends if you like well, that kind true. of flavor <laughs> yeah yeah it's a lot more expensive. You need two different amps. Two amps. Then, so yeah, that right. Well, that, there are a yeah. few that have both, but yeah, that's rare. Yeah, and yeah. They, well, they're not cheap either. They're not cheap. Yeah, if you get an amp that has electrostat and yeah, yeah, and me right. personally, like I never think that's really a good idea, you know, to throw high voltage in in, in a same amplifier. I think mm. I think noise has to creep in in, in some way. Mm. I mean, I guess if you're not using the high voltage section, it probably shuts off. But I don't know. You know, probably. I don't know. If you don't have an electrostat plugged in, it probably turns off that section. But I wouldn't imagine it would. No, you don't think yeah. so? No? But it's possible. It seems unlikely. I, mean, I would I imagine know. it would basically be two independent amplifiers driven simultaneously. Yeah. Well, you certainly can't mistakenly likely. plug one into the wrong jack because they're completely different. Yeah, I guess they wouldn't have so like So you can't make a mistake. Power plugs. You know? It. And it is cool to have one box, even though I think they are four or five grand or something like that or more, but the, the one or two manufacturers that make a dual purpose, mm. it is cool to have one amp do both, and you could, if you own both, great. Right. But you don't need that, really, if you know, if you, I would say, you know, most people, most, 99.9% .9 of the customers that own high-end headphones are going to have one or the yeah, other. You pick a path. Yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. much, yeah. I mean, sometimes people switch, but they got to, they just switch out their whole system. Yeah. Because you, you know, pretty yeah, much That's one it. part of the attraction, yeah. though, because... If you use a conventional driver, if you use a planar magnetic or any of the other more exotic designs that use standard amplifiers, the the width of headphones that you could drive with this is very significant. Yeah. You could drive 
pretty much everything except electrostatics. So they're really two different fields. You got to figure out which one you want to play in, right? Because um, <laughs> they are not compatible. They're totally different. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's that. It is yeah. what it is, you know. And hey, it's all fun now. It's all good. It's all part of the hobby. And yep. you know, if you get bored with one thing, what the hell? I'll try it. <laughs> See if you like it. Right. Mm -hmm. More power to everybody. You know, it's just, these are these are big boy toys. Why not? So, I think that covers the gist of it. Yeah, I think we covered that. If anyone else has anything further to add, you can leave it in the comments below. What you'd like to see in a future video, let us know that as well. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and stay subscribed to see more content like this. Thank you. Take care, guys.